Well, here we go. It is week one of the 2025 season here in the Iceman Coach Mode Dynasty, and Coach Clausen will be beginning his first season with Colorado. After a great couple of years with Texas State, he has moved on, decided to take over a program that has a little more prominence, a little more national prestige, and hey, maybe from here he could actually win a national championship. I actually remember... Uh, I guess I'm kind of showing my age here a little bit, but when I was a kid, I remember Colorado winning the national championship. I believe it was 1990. And Tennessee played Colorado that first season in Anaheim, and like, it was like the kickoff classic or something. And uh, Tennessee uh, had a chance to win the game. They had a run right at the end, but the running back did not step out of bounds in time to give, I think it was Burke, or the kicker at the time, a chance to win the game. And um, so it ended up in a tie. And then Colorado would go on to win the national title. Tennessee would win the SEC championship and go to the Sugar Bowl and beat Virginia. Um, so, yeah, again, showing my age a little bit. But that was <laughs> – Colorado is obviously a program where you can win a national title. They play the Pac-12. Uh, so it's a new challenge for, for Coach Clawson, trying to rebuild this program. They're coming off of a 4-8 and eight season. Coach Carl, uh, Carl Durrell – was the coach who was let go uh, after you know, a few years of not being able to really get the Buffaloes going. And the AD finally decided to uh, pull the plug uh, last season and bring in Kloss in. So here we go. Uh, just kind of looking around, we're going to go first to the top stories. Uh, we won't spend a lot of time at Alabama, uh, Bryant-Denny Stadium. Obviously, the Crimson Tide win a lot there. There's another one about Alabama and their senior Arrington, who was a Heisman finalist last year. Uh, Clemson uh, to Page in their defense. Not sure who that is, but it'll just show. I think it just shows the schedule. Oh no, here we go. Spencer Page, an outside linebacker. He is a 95 overall player. So Clemson uh, last year, I think they were in the playoff. LSU, the magnificent 11. They've got the defense this year to go all the way. They're ranked number five to start the year. Uh, another one about Clemson and their defense. Let's see, um, USC, they've just had disappointing season after disappointing season, but this year I guess they hope to make a run. They're ranked number 25. I guess the pollsters are now at a, they're kind of in the, uh, yeah, Trojans, we'll believe it when we see it mode. Uh, kind of can't blame them there, I guess. And then Oklahoma, ranked number 22. Uh, can't anyone slow down OU's passing attack? Um, yeah, you don't really show much as far as their players. I guess Romero is the one who's coming back. Uh, so anyway, that's the top stories. We'll look real quick at uh, the preseason polls. Uh, first of all, we'll just look at the top 25. You've got Alabama, Florida, Clemson, A&M, LSU, Oregon, Michigan, Texas, Cal, Iowa. That's your top 10. Uh, then we go to Arkansas, Penn State, Nebraska, Washington, Miami, Ohio State, West Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Purdue, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, Georgia, and then USC down there at 25th. Where is Colorado, which is kind of interesting, Coastal Carolina right there, ranked number 26. They come off a Big Ten win season. Um, you're going to start seeing those Clawson recruits move on, though, so I, you know, I don't think that, that Coastal Carolina will hang around uh, that, you know, that up that high for much longer. Probably could win the Sun Belt this year. We'll see. But let's look at um, where Colorado is ranked. And then Texas State, you see Texas State ranked 34th, uh, Clawson, where Clawson left. They're now a three-star program. Good for them. Uh, but Colorado obviously is going to be way down, way down the list. Way down. Uh, 84th is where Colorado is. Now, good news, that overall rating is only a B. So that's higher than a lot of the teams above us. But, you know, it really doesn't matter. Um, it, it matters about the team that's on the other side of the field on game day. So uh, we play in the Pac-12, so we're going to play some good opponents. What about conference outlook? Yeah, we're picked to finish dead last. I mean, uh, sixth place in the South. Um, and, you know, these are five very good teams. Uh, USC, 91 overall. Uh, Arizona is an 83. Utah, an 81. UCLA is a 90. And Arizona State at 83. Meanwhile, we're in 84. So I guess we do stack up pretty well against most of these teams, except USC and UCLA. Uh, meanwhile, in the North, and we'll go back to the North. Uh, Oregon is a 95, Cal a 91, Washington 88, Stanford an 88, Oregon and State, and then Washington at 83. So, you know, we would be fifth, I guess, looking at the overall ratings-wise if we were in the north. Um, so, I guess talent-wise, we'll be able to compete um, in our division, hopefully. 
Um, Heisman Watch, we're not going to have anybody on this list, but we'll throw it up there. Jude Leeds, uh, he's the early favorite, the running back from Florida. The quarterback, Rashad Anderson from Oregon, is second. Arrington, the 99 overall running back from Alabama, is third. Lee Davis, quarterback from Notre Dame, is fourth. And then Matt Hayes, the uh, power back from Navy, is uh, he rounds out the early list. Um, do we have any All Americans? Let's see. I've not, to be honest with you, I've not looked at this list. So, if you want to see who's All American for, oh, we do have they got Brian Wright and James Johnson there. Our two defensive ends are on the off preseason All American list. They will drop off because they will not get near as many tackles. Oh, we've got a punter, Edmund Weber. Our punter is a first team All American. Second team. Uh, no second teamers, it looks like. Uh, what about all Pac-12? Let's see if we've got anybody on the list here. We do have got a right guard there. So let's slide down this list. Right guard is Marcus Hunt. He's a senior, retro senior. He is pretty good, 97. He's, yeah, let's see if he, what he ranks overall. Yeah, he's the best lineman in the conference. I, I figured that would be true. Um, Defensive players. Do we have anybody on defense in the first team? And we, yeah, we're just Weber. Second team. No, not looking good on offense. Oh, we do have a right tackle. Um, Chad Miles. So the right side of our offensive line is going to be pretty good, I guess. So we look on nobody else, it looks like. So not a big... Not, we're not uh, full of a bunch of superlatives. But that's okay, you know, that's okay. That'll give us, you know, a little motivation, right, uh, to go out and uh, do well. Um, we will look at our depth chart. This will probably be, I, I might shorten the game footage a little bit. But, uh, our starting quarterback is going to be Mark Brown. Uh, he's pretty good. Uh, Hodge, our running back, I put him there speed. Um, uh, fullbacks is Al Amir Alston. He's actually the second team running back, but I you know, want him as my fullback as well. Receivers, uh, so this is the Y receiver. Uh, Herman, he, uh, he's my best receiver overall. I always put my best receiver at the Y position. Then you got Benny uh, is the X, or maybe he's the H. Uh, that's right, yeah, he would be the H, and then Webb is the Z, and Smith is the X. A lot of that doesn't make sense to you, I'm sure, but it makes sense to me. Uh, tight end, Larry Johnson is an 87. He's actually pretty good, and I'm going to mess with my playbook this year to bring some tight end formations in. I've been watching a lot of the Josh Heupel, um, just because as a Tennessee fan, I watched the spring game and went and watched some UCF footage from Josh Heupel's time at Central Florida. And obviously he runs kind of a his own sort of version of the air raid, but I think I'm gonna implement some of those um, some of those formations in. I've already messed with the playbook a little bit. Uh, left tackle, more 79, 82, 79. Then we got the right side of our line, 96 or 97, sorry, and then Miles 86. So obviously we're gonna be more effective when we run to the right. Um, and then left hand 77, right hand 75. That's not very good. Uh, <laughs> up the middle. Uh, Brown is an 88, and then I've got a couple of 80 overall defensive tackles. Uh, left outside linebacker, 79, 80, 85. So White is okay, nothing, you know, nothing special. Our running back, sorry, cornerbacks, 86, 84. That's solid, nice solid, but we're, they're still going to get beat by the better receivers. Uh, and then I got 77s as my nickel and dime backs. Free safety, Lucas Hill, 84 overall. And then obviously Stevenson is a big weakness. I just can't believe this guy. He's seven. He's a redshirt senior. How low was his rating as a as a freshman? Had to be in the had to be in the 40s. Um, so that's you know that's a bad spot right now. Strong safety. We are weak. Weber will punt and kick. Uh, returners. I'm gonna let Welsh, my cornerback, return. He is. He's got decent speed and good acceleration. So I'm hoping that he can get me some good return yards. Set up our field position. Um, and so there you go. That is our depth chart. Um, what about recruiting? Well, let's take a look at recruiting. I've got a 35 man list here. I always do that. Uh, a lot of these guys are going to drop off. It's hard to tell week one because you, you know, a lot of, you don't know who's off, who else is offering, um, and so on. But I did some scouting on Mackey and he turned out to be a big time bust. He lost nine after scouting. Um, I'm still going to leave him on the list. I need two quarterbacks. So. 
I'll get him hoping that I can get this guy Elbert. Um, I'm way behind, but I guess I'm kind of hoping that I can land him. He is a, um, he's in one of my pipeline states. And I think TCU is the only other one of those schools that has a Oklahoma pipeline. So um, yeah, I'm kind of hoping that we can, whatever, get him. Um, I'm not going after these running backs yet. I mean, I probably end up going to having to drop both. Uh, I do want both of them. I think I might next week throw start throwing points at Childs because I'll, I'll know from the rest of the list who I'm going to have to drop off once I see who else is offered, how many points. Is gonna, like For example, let's say Tareen Davis. I'm going after him, but if I see that, um, let's say, I don't know, Florida State, who is above me, if Florida State starts throwing maximum points at him they're probably going to get him so I, and i'll be able to see that next week and i can bail on davis and put that towards towards childs the reason i really want childs is he's an in-state guy i just you know he's he's a five star uh, I, I don't like lose the idea of losing a five star player that i would sign uh he's got you know he's got good attributes he's got 95 speed 96 acceleration 93 agility I'm really kind of talking myself into right now going after him. I don't have any needs at running back, but this is this is the perfect running back for what we try to do. And so to lose him, you know, an in-state guy, um, I mean, it'd be one thing if he was slow. Then I probably wouldn't go after him, but I wouldn't even have him on my list. But he's, you know, he's the kind of player I want, so I don't like the idea of not getting him. Um, so I'll probably throw some points at him. I don't know, maybe I'll come back in a second. I don't know, off camera. Um, going after this receiver, Reese and Davis, I need a couple receivers, so I've got nine right now on my list, knowing that I probably won't be able to sign all of them. Well, obviously, I won't be able to sign all of them, but most of them I'll end up dropping. Um, don't really need a tight end, but I've got one on the list, and then I've got some linemen. I'm going after some, you know, these two guards right now, Mills and White. Um... Defensive tackle, I have a need there, so I've got a couple guys I'm targeting. Uh, I need a cornerback, uh, secondary. I also need a punter, that's a big need, so I've got two on my list. I want to get Malone, but um, Armstrong is more of the sure thing, so I'm just, I'm gonna, that's another situation where I'm kind of feeling it out. So so that's a little look, look at recruiting. Um, and what about our opponent today, Colorado State? Well, let's look at Colorado State. Um, they obviously we have a better team uh, according to you know the the way that NCAA football rates the players so you know, feel pretty good about that um, they really won't know much about their opponents or sorry their uh, uh, performance because they've not played anybody yet this is week one uh, obviously they are a Mountain West Conference team mm, don't really we will go look at their uh, depth chart so their quarterback, Reggie Wilson, is a dual threat guy, obviously, 87-90. Uh, he's a 90 overall quarterback, so uh, he is going to be a load. He's going to be tough to handle. Their running backs, thankfully, aren't great, but um, you know they do have good speed, so if they get loose, they'll be tough to catch. Uh, fullback's not that great. Receiving core, not overly scary. Their third receiver is a 92 overall with 88 acceleration. Um, which 87 speed is not bad, especially when you when you couple it with an over 90 acceleration. So, um, but we're not overly worried about their receivers. Tight end Thompson is good, um, but then they get to the second, third, they're not so good. Uh, their offensive line 80, 79, 88, 77, 77. So they've got a couple good linemen. Um, the left tackle is okay. They got two linemen that are over 80, so they're not going to really overpower us. I mean, we're, our defensive line is, is not great. Anyway, up the middle, we might you know, we might be able to give them some problems, but uh, for the most part, uh, offensive line is sort of average. Uh, defensive linemen, they're 70, they have 76, 81. You know, D tackles are 83 overall, um, so they, have a, they do have a solid defensive line. Left outside linebacker, 76. Middle, 66. Right is an 84. Uh, cornerbacks, 80, 78, 78. So, you know, not great, but uh, I, I wouldn't say it's a back a defensive backfield that we can necessarily count on that we're going to dominate, uh, at least not their corner. Now, in the secondary, they're kind of like us. Free safety, mediocre. Strong safety, terrible. They're, they're starting a true freshman so uh, who's slow. So not a lot to really be worried about uh, in the secondary. 
kicker's a 72, their punter is a 65. So we do have a uh, special teams advantage. So that is a look at um, this week one situation. Let's go ahead and begin this game and hopefully beat down the in-state rivalry, uh, beat down the in-state rival to start Clawson's career with the Buffaloes. So here we are looking at the team ratings again. Obviously, we had to have a slight advantage in every area, overall offense and defense. Top players for Colorado State, it's Wilson, the quarterback, Bailey, the center, and then the center, Cade. Is that, that right? Two. Yeah, their center. <laughs> Both of their centers are top players. Uh, for us, offensive lineman Hunt, obviously 97. This is a guy who um, has a chance to really sort of dominate for us. Um, hopefully he can do that. Brown, the quarterback, will be our second best uh, player overall. And then Weber, the kicker, uh, is uh, Weber the third. So big game here. Let's get it started. And so here we are. We are in uh, Colorado, obviously, as this is a big in-state rivalry here. We got the Buffaloes and the Rams. Um, bitter, bitter rivals. Uh, I'll, I'll start out this way. I actually, in 1989, again, showing my age, was at a game uh, between Tennessee and Colorado State. The Vols were coming off of a losing season. The season before, they had lost their first six games, won the last five, but obviously that wasn't enough to get a bowl game or anything. The next game, they, the next season, they opened up with Colorado State and really struggled. It was just an abysmal performance and um, actually almost almost lost. But Tennessee that day did manage to get a 17-14 win. Uh, so they started the year 1-0. We walked out of the stadium mm, kind of figuring that this was going to be another rough year. But the Vols really got it going. They actually went 10-1 and one, uh, in the regular season that year, tied for the SEC Championship with Auburn and Alabama, and then went to the Cotton Bowl where they beat um, Arkansas 31-27. So that 1989 season started with a win over Colorado State. We are here at Mile High Stadium where the Broncos play. So Wilson 2-2 two of two right now. There he fakes the handoff, throw across the middle, and it's intercepted! Picked off! That is big. That's the kind of play that we look to make with this defense. And really, it was a bad throw by the quarterback, but hey, whatever. We'll take it as the Buffaloes will start with great field position. Third and six for the Colorado offense. And Smith gets it away. He had a man in the flat. Could have been a first down, but he overthrew him. Incomplete. So it'll be a decision. So we're going to send our good kicker out. He's He's got a 99 power leg. So he's got a very strong leg. His accuracy it leaves a little to be desired, but we'll see if he can make this 55-yard kick. And he got it. 55 yards. What a way to start the season for him. And Colorado will take the early lead after the uh, Rams turnover. Empty backfield this time for Colorado State. They're going to throw to his right. It's complete. That'll be a first down and then some. This is the tight end. Matt Inman picks up 18. And Colorado blitzes this time. Pass is complete, but it will not be enough for the first down. Winston, no gain. Fourth down coming up for the Rams. So. Here goes the Buffaloes. And pass is complete this time as Herman makes the catch for 12 yards. First down and 10 from the 45. Bubble screen out, and that's complete. They turn it upfield. This is a big gain for Larry Johnson. 16 yards on that catch. Larry Johnson has been the go-to guy on this drive. Mark Brown now has the Buffaloes inside the red zone. He will pass here across the middle. It's caught inside the five. That's Ray Webb for 14 yards. Second and goal from about the one. Brown snaps out some orders to his line. Handoff up the middle, Hodge finds the end zone, two yard touchdown run, and Colorado goes up 10 to nothing on a very methodical drive. So this time Wilson will be from the pistol. He's got three receivers on the field. He will fake the handoff, throws it long on the left, and that's intercepted, another Buffalo's interception. 
And how about that Tampa 2 defense? Pretty much all I've been doing is different variations of the cover 2, the Tampa, the old Tampa 2. And there you see Stevenson with the interception. Number 48, Brown. Talking to his line. We'll take the snap, look the throw to his left. That is complete, and that is a first down to Smith again. So this will probably be the last play of the first quarter. Brown takes the snap. He will throw. Throws to his left. That is complete. That is Hodge out of the backfield. He gets away a couple tacklers, knocks over a couple of others, and trots into the end zone. But there is a flag. Clipping, so that'll bring it back. That'll make it second and four and wipe the points off the board. But that is the end of the first quarter. Colorado State, right now, they are in control of this game. Colorado, Anything Colorado State's gotten going, the Buffalo defense has snuffed out with an interception. Here goes Brown, third and four. Looking to throw. Across the middle, that's complete. And that is Larry Johnson again. First and ten for the Buffaloes. Second and 10 from the 16. Two backs, three receivers. Colorado, Colorado State showing a safety blitz. And it comes. They get it out. Oh, but the running back ran backwards for some reason. But he still ends up. Alston gets 10 yards and the first down. Nice play from Alston. First and goal from the six. Buffalo is looking to go up three scores here. Pass across the middle is complete. Mike Smith with the touchdown catch. That'll put Colorado up 16 to nothing with the extra point on the way. Pretty good start so far for the Clawson offense here in Colorado. Thirty from the twenty-nine, third and ten. Tight end goes from left to right for Wilson. He's going to throw. It's a screen to the right. It's complete to Garcia, but Garcia will not get there. Fourth and five coming up. So we go again. Four wide for, for Brown. Takes the snap. Looks to throw to his left. He's got a man. That is complete to Andrew Venny for 16 yards. That will move the chains and keep this Colorado drive alive. Brown now up to 149 yards. Third and two from the 32. They need the 30 for the first down. Brown, three receivers to his right. He will pass. And it looks like everybody's covered. Brown's in some trouble. He gets away and then gets knocked back by one of his own linemen. That's a big loss. That'll make it fourth and 13. So the Buffalo, uh, the Buffaloes are going to go for this on fourth and 13. Brown taking the snap. He's looking. He goes long, going into the end zone. And knocked away. So that will be a turnover on downs. Colorado just didn't want to um, try another long field goal. Then they're also too close to punt. Clawson very aggressive with those counter decisions. Second down and three. Receiver comes into the backfield. And they're going to run the option with him, pitches it to him, and he gets around the left side. He's got a lot of space. He gets that into Colorado territory, down to the 28. Big run by Tim Harris. Third and six. Wilson to throw. Colorado blitzes, passes away, and dropped. <clears throat> they had their man, but the pass was dropped. So Colorado State here with a 40-yard field goal. This will get cut it back down to a two-touchdown game for the, for the Rams. And the kick is up. And he got it. 17-3 now. So from right at the 40, they need midfield. First down here. And pass is complete. 
That is a bullet to Freddie Herman for 18 yards. That will be a Buffalo first down. What a throw here. Just a square in route. First and 10 from the Colorado State 43. Brown to throw. Across the middle. That's complete to the tight end. Larry Johnson for 12 yards. Third and two from Brant for Brown and the Colorado offense at about the 22. Brown to throw. He's in trouble. He gets away from the first attempt and he throws a complete pass to Ray Webb for a 21 yard gain. What a play by Brown as the Colorado State defender got through on the blitz, but Brown evades the sack and then throws a perfect pass to Webb for the first down. Second and goal. Hand off up the middle to Hodge, who will get his second touchdown run of the game, and Colorado now pushes their lead out to 20 with the extra point on the way. Empty backfield again for Wilson. Throws it across the middle. That one is complete again to Harris for 14. Second and five. Rams to throw long to the left. They've got a man, and that is a touchdown to Ramon Williams. Got in behind the Colorado secondary there. And that was a play where I couldn't get the defense picked in time. I wanted, I had a defense I wanted, couldn't get to it, and so this is what happens. <laughs> Colorado State scores again. So second and 10 from the 44. Brown to throw, 30 seconds to go. He's going long. He's got a man, it's complete to Ray Webb for 37 yards and a first down. Second and goal after the, after the spike. So they might have one throw to the end zone before they kick the field goal. Brown here throws it to his right and ooh, almost picked. So four seconds, we'll have to kick the field goal here. So this 25 yard kick is up and good. So it's 27 to 10. And that is the end of the first half. Colorado answered that touchdown drive with a field goal. That could be important. That could be big. It makes the uh, it pushes their lead from two scores to three, uh, from 14 to 17. That's bigger than it might seem. So right now they lead it at halftime, 27 to 10. Um, takeaways. Right now the running game is not where Coach Colossal would like for it to be. Um, obviously they're not a running team. But when they have ran the ball, it's not been as effective as they would like it to be. I think they uh, Hodge has a couple of decent runs, eight, nine yards. But uh, they, when they start playing these better teams, they're going to need some more gashing runs out of the running game. Um, but on the other hand, Brown has had a great game. He has really settled into this offense, and he's doing well. He is keeping the ball moving. He's made some plays um, that has gotten Colorado uh, this big lead. Uh, also, the defense has done well. Um, the, the Colorado State touchdown drive was not great. But aside from that, they've done they've you know gotten the job done, um, which is, of course, keeping Colorado State out of the end zone. Also, two turnovers, two interceptions, um, which that's a big part of what they hope to do on defense this year. So, um, so far, so good for Colorado. Sure, there's some things you could nitpick, but they lead 27 to 10. Um, second half will tell a big story. How, how well will that Colorado rushing game be? Um, 18 yards is absolutely terrible. And while they're not looking to get 200, maybe 100 would be good. Brown here brings his offense out. Four receivers, two on each side. The handoff goes to Hodge. Up the middle. There's a big run from Hodge. 16 yards. Brown obviously saw that Colorado State had sort of emptied out the box there on the second level and hit him right up the middle. For a big game, second and ten for Brown and the Colorado offense. He's going to throw across the middle. That's complete. That is to the uh, 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 Alston for 14 yards. The running back, third and five for Colorado here. Brown takes the snap, looks to throw. He's in some trouble. Heaves it to absolutely no one, and it falls incomplete. So that'll be fourth down. So this will be another long field goal, 51 yarder. He made the 55 yarder earlier. This one is up, and he got it. 30 to 10, Colorado scores. And looks like he got it straight down the middle. Plenty of distance. So this time he's got two receivers in the tight end to his right. Wilson will hand this one off. Garcia 
hit that hole hard and gets 11 yards. That'll be first and 10. Four receivers on the field here for Wilson. He brings one in the backfield and will give it to him. And good blocking. And the receiver will get the first down. That's Tim Harris for 14 yards. And Wilson to throw. He looks, throws it to the left. He's got a man. It's caught, but there is a flag. Tell me it's holding. Please tell me it's holding. Illegal touching. That should be a loss of down. Yeah, loss of down. So Colorado State, after all that, will now have to attempt a field goal. This will be about a 37-yarder. And the kick is no good. He missed it. He missed it. What a hold by the Colorado defense. And that'll send Brown and the Buffalo offense back onto the field with a 20-point lead. And here goes Brown. First and 10 from his own 20. He's going to pass. And he throws it, dumps it off out of the backfield to uh, Alston, who picks up the first down. Looks like they cleared everything out un and leaving Alston all alone underneath. 20th first down of the game for Colorado as Brown here back to throw. Out of the backfield again. This will be another first down to Alston. He will get almost 20 yards, 22 yards on that catch. Third and 10 from the 41. They need, obviously, the 31. Brown in some trouble. Gets it out of the backfield to uh, Palmer, who gets three. That's going to make it fourth and seven. So why not another 55-yard field goal? Kick is down, and it, the hold was down, and he missed it. Probably asking a bit much to hit two 55-yarders in a game. Uh, his accuracy is not great, and here we see him kick it all the way across wide left. Third and four. Another toss sweep. Garcia gets away from a tackler. And another. He's gone. He will not be caught. He run a 56-yard touchdown run. Runs away from the Colorado defense. And now the Rams are back in this game. There are only two scores down. As Garcia, two tacklers there had a shot. Another one got blocked and, made, and uh, missed the diving tackle. And then he was he was in the clear. So now from the Colorado State 36, closer to the 35, Brown to pass. He's in some trouble, throws it to his left, and that is complete to Alston, who gets around the defender and gets it up to the 15. Alston having a big day making catches out of the backfield. He's got 80 yards receiving. He's been a good check down option for Brown. So first and 10 from about the 15. Brown to throw. He's got a man wide open. That's a touchdown to Sam Purcell, the true freshman. This is a guy that Clawson brought in at the very end of the recruiting season. And his first catch as a Buffalo is a touchdown catch. So the Buffalo lead is back up to 20 after that score. Third 13, four receivers, two on each side here for Wilson. He's going to throw. It's a screen, and Wilson is sacked. Flaw uh, loses 11 yards. It'll be fourth down now and 24. And that's the end of the third quarter. So with one period left to play, Colorado has a 20-point lead, 37-17. to 17. And Colorado State now, they've got to make a stop right now. And then they are, they, they're going to need to start scoring immediately. There are three scores down. They cannot afford to give up any more points and still have a chance here. But this game isn't over. So now first down and 10 in the red zone. 
Again, a receiver comes in motion. Brown fakes the handoff. He is going to throw. He's got a man. Touchdown. That's Paul Palmer on the 22-yard reception. Coming out of the backfield on the wheel route. Perfectly executed play there. As Palmer got behind his man, the man waved him off to the, uh, to the deep coverage, but couldn't get there in time. Tight end now goes from left to right. Wilson throwing the screen on third and six. It's complete to Garcia, who will be stopped short. Fourth and one now for the Rams, but you gotta think they would go for this. So in second and three, two receivers to each side for Brown. He'll bring a receiver in motion and hand in the ball, and he'll have the first down. Big time run there by Andrew Vinny. 10 yards on the carry from the 43 for Colorado. Round to pass, and Colorado State sent everybody, and that left a man wide open. That's Freddie Herman. You can't leave that guy open. He makes the catch, picks up 15 yards in the first down. From the 29, receiver in motion, and they'll hand it off to Alston, who will get a, put his head down. I start a Palmer. He'll get put his head down, and get three yards. That'll make it fourth and four. So the Buffaloes will attempt their fourth field goal. Actually, I think this is their fifth attempt. Yeah, fifth attempt. They've made three of the four. This will be a, what, 38-yarder. The kick is good. So Colorado pushes the lead up to 30. It's now 47 to 17. And so here it is, third and 10. Wilson will throw. It's going to be a screen, and that is complete. Garcia will not get the first down. He only picks up one. That makes it fourth and nine. Third down and three. Colorado four wide. Brown hands it off to Palmer again. Up the middle, he gashes the Colorado State defense for a 12-yard run. So first and 10 now from the 24. Brown will throw. Across the middle, he's got a man. That is complete. That's Ray Webb for 17 yards. It is first and goal. First and goal from the seven. Colorado trying to get to half a hundred to get to 50 here. Brown will roll to his left. Comes back, now he throws and it's intercepted. He throws a pick in the end zone. Uh, not a great way to end his day, but um, yeah, the whole body work is good for uh, for Brown today. Just that one bad decision, right? There. Wilson again to throw. Moves around the pocket. He's going long, and it's intercepted. That'll be Colorado's third interception of the day. Ben Hodges with the pick there. Threw it right into his waiting arms. And that is your game. The Colorado Buffaloes start the Casey Clawson era 1-0 after a win over the in-state rival Rams. 47-17. Uh, to 17. A strong performance. Obviously, there's some... Uh, you know, some wrinkles to be ironed out, some kinks. Uh, but uh, overall, it was a good day. Good first effort for the uh, for Colorado under, the, under this new regime. Um, Mike Brown had, a, or Mark Brown had a big day, over 400 yards passing. Uh, he, uh, you know, he, he's got that one little blotch that with the interception in the end zone on the last drive. But all in all, 37 to 55, 441 yards, three touchdowns. That's a good day. Uh, we'll take that every day. Uh, if he gets that every game, then we're gonna, he's going to give the team a chance to win. Um, they did get up over 100 yards rushing in the second half. That was, you know, a goal. Uh, they kind of had to force it a little bit, but they still got it done. Um, defensively, uh, the new Tampa 2 offense did pretty well. Uh, they, uh, it was the idea of this thing is to force the Rams to uh, force the opponent to execute. Um, Colorado State really only did that on a couple of drives. Uh, they did also throw three interceptions, the three turnovers. That's another big goal of this defense. And so, um, all in all, yeah, good day on both sides of the ball. Now, can they get this? Will they play like this when the opposition gets better? That's obviously going to be the big test. Next week, they'll be playing a Power 5 opponent. So they're going to have to, um, yeah, they're going to have to probably step it up. But let's look at the stats. First downs, 29 first downs. That's a good day. We were very methodical today, which is kind of... Um, 
was good. And you'd like to have more big plays, I guess. But we made a few. You know, we made a few big plays. Um, but uh, total offense, 545 yards. We held Colorado State below 300. So that's, you know, that's a pretty much a good day. Uh, they had 145 yards on the ground. That's not bad, right? If you got, if, you, if we average giving that up a game, uh, we'll take that. Um, the passing, uh, our passing defense was, pass defense was, it was a big plus. Only 143 yards on 20 completions. That means we're only giving up about seven yards of completion. And so that's, you know, that's good. Um, again, we play that Tampa 2 defense. You're trying to keep everything in front of you. Um, now, will our safeties be able to handle uh, more fades and corners? Man, you know, that'll be a question that we'll have to see. Uh, our passing, meanwhile, 441 yards. Good day. 30 out conversions. We were 6 of 11. Uh, they were 5 of 12. So we had a little bit of an advantage there. Um, red In the red zone, of course, the one interception stung a little bit, but um, you know, most of it was good. Turnovers again. Turnovers were a big story. We had three picks. They had the one, but by then the game was pretty much over. And, of course, our third one was when the game was definitely over. Uh, dominated time possession. Um, so, yeah, good day statistically. We look at player stats. We already saw Browns. Um, good day. The one pick, obviously, the bummer, but, you know, all, all in all, pretty good day. I'd like to get that per passing percentage up a little bit. Um, but that was there were some drops. Rushing. We uh, split the carries between Hodge, Alston, and Palmer, and they got the job done. Uh, over 100 yards rushing. Uh, Venny uh, gave a couple receivers had runs. Um, so, you know, we, 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 we uh, definitely split our carries around. Um, yeah, Webb and Venny. Uh, receiving uh, Webb, big day for him, 115 yards. He was leading, he led in uh, total yards. Alston out at the backfield at 83. Herman, seven catches for 75. Um, Johnson, the tight end, got involved early in the game. Didn't get as many passes to him later on. We'll have to look at that. Um, Benny, 14, or 34 yards. Palmer, 25. We spread the ball around really good. This new look on offense, I think, is going to be good for us. Uh, we'll look at that as we go forward. Blocking, you know, who cares? Uh, tackles. Uh, White led the team with eight tackles. Uh, TFLs, Scott and... Cordy Brown, two defensive linemen, led the team in TFLs. So that's going to be common in our defense. Uh, we did have three interceptions. Hodges, Welsh on the corner, and then Stevenson, the strong safety, uh, which is good. Say, look at his, his, his overall is a 71. But, man, he's 6'5". I just saw that. I don't know why I hadn't caught that before, but a 6'5 strong safety. Hopefully he'll um, that will help him make more picks this year. Uh, kicking, Weber, decent day, 4'5". He hit 155 yarder. He missed a 50, I think 52 um, so, you know, we're not going to be too harsh on him, but he also made all of his extra points, so that's important. And we did not punt at all. So that is the game. Um, yeah, good start. Good start. Uh, I'm not going to say great. You know, they uh, gave up 17. But uh, got a 30-point win. Start the year 1-0. So this is Vault Force 1 signing off. Make sure you tune in for our next episode when we believe we take on it's either Missouri or... It's a power five opponent, so make sure you're there. We'll see you guys next time.